Hello everyone, welcome to Caroline's Craftery. Today I would just like to share a new little template kit that I've made. And it is called Crazy CD Envelopes. Now we all know what CD envelopes are. We've got that window. This is a boughten one. Somebody actually sent it to me. And I can't find them around here. So I decided I'm going to make a template. So it consists of three pages. So you get the envelope part. And this is the size of a regular CD envelope. So with that, you get a bunch of shapes that you can cut out to cut the hole out of the middle. And I thought rather than just a circle, why not other shapes? So I filled in the pages using some different shapes. And you also get some different flaps. So if you don't like just the plain, ordinary little flap, you have some extra options. So I'm going to show you some examples and then I'm going to make one just to show you. So I've cut all my template pieces out. It's a 65 pound cardstock, not really super thin, but thick enough to do the job. And I've cut all the pieces out. So there are those. And I'll be using these as I go along. Actually, I'm going to use, where is it? I want a small circle for the project I'm going to do. I'm going to use a piece of my eco-dyed paper. I'll leave a link to this set down below. Now, you don't have to use this to cut out. You can use all kinds of different die shapes if you wanted. So these are just a few of the dies that I have that would work. So, but I'm going to cut mine out by hand today. And here is some examples. Now this one here I made. I used the small circle. I put a couple die cuts. I had a piece of vellum that was in a book that I had gotten. So I put that in there. And then the back, and of course you can see it's just a piece of music paper. And inside there's just a little fairly plain tag or journaling card. And that's just the normal envelope. So there's that one. And this one here is actually cut out of a piece of wrapping paper. I love the colors. I used the large, wide, um, this one here to cut this in. Now you could use these shapes for other things just to cut a hole in an envelope or something as well. So there's that and then I just cut out a couple of the flowers that were on the wrapping paper and just glued them on top of the window. This one does not have a, a card or anything. And this one I used the um, kind of more of a traditional envelope style. And because I had the room, because it was a piece of wrapping paper and it was really, really big, I laid my dies, or the templates, I put the one down, and then I just put this one on top, lined it up like so, and then I traced around the whole thing. Now you can do this separate and this separate, and then just glue this on top of it, wherever you wanted it. And then you have your bigger fold. So, so there's that one. I really love the color of this one. This one I put the two side pieces on the outside. Whereas this one I tucked them onto the inside. So either way it works good. This one I did out of a piece of wrapping paper. But I didn't put 
any holes in it or anything. It's just an envelope. And I really like how that one turned out as well. So if you just want to make a pocket or something, you can do that too. So let's start with this here and let's see what we can do. They're very easy to assemble and make. So we've got this here on the back. I've already traced out my big piece. And I just put that on there, put it where I wanted it, grab my pencil around it. And now we can cut it out. Um, when I cut out my templates, I cut them all on the very outside of the black lines. Um, I think it's important to do all of them the same. So if you cut them all on the outside, or all on the inside, or all down the middle, as long as you've cut them all the same. You can very easily resize that as well. And make bigger or smaller. It's going to be hard to make them bigger because of the fact that the envelope just fits on eight and a half by 11 inch sheets of paper. Um, could have made them just a tiny little bit bigger, but so I'll just cut this out. I had a lot of fun making this. And if you're like me and can't get the, the CD envelopes, then this is kind of an alternative. And I just printed a tea dyed paper on the back of this as well. Should have cut this apart off of camera, but I did kind of want to show you in real time of doing this. Hopefully I'm staying in frame as I'm cutting this. Although you all know how to cut things out. I tried to make things easy to cut out. So do you have trouble finding the CD envelopes where you are? I am in Canada, in BC, and I've checked the dollar stores and all different shops and whatnot. And there's just not popular. So there we have that there. So now I want this here on here. So it doesn't really matter where whether you draw it on the inside or the outside. I'm going to draw it on here because I want to... Um, I like to cut from the right side of my paper to the back side. So I'm going to try and... I'm going to put my ruler here because I want to see where that line is going to be so I can relatively get it in the center. I think right about there, so I'm just going to trace around. I could have folded it and then do this as well. So there is that. So now I'm just going to cut that out. I'm just going to poke my scissors in there. And I do a really rough cut first to get the center out of the circle. Because then when you've got a little more room in there, it's a little easier to cut it out. So now I like to cut with my line on the left side of my scissors. Everybody might do this a bit different, but this is the way I do it. And I'm going to take my time because I do want it to be 
as smooth of a circle as possible. This is also where a die cut would come in very handy. And there's no reason why it can't be any shape. Square, rectangle, circle, flower shaped. Any, any shape you wanted, really. Or no shape at all. Or you could draw out these circles, the squares, the other shapes in the template out of a different color of paper and put it on there. And you don't have to sew or anything unless you want to. And there is my circle cut out of there. I'm hoping it's going to be relatively even. I think it's way over that way, but that's okay because I'm going to put something down there. Anyways, <clears throat> so let's ink up the circle before I forget. And I like to ink pretty much everything. I just find that it kind of covers up mistakes. Um, it'll cover up a bit of unevenness and whatnot. Okay, now I'm going to score it. So I'm going to flip it over. And I do have a scoreboard, but it usually sits on the top of my desk and it stays there. And I use my ruler and a stylus. So I'm going to line that up, and I'm just going to do that just by lining up the, the edges of this. And I'm just going to go over that a couple of times, and then I turn it. If you don't have a stylus, you could use anything with a blunt end on it. You can grab these stylus and here you can grab them in like the dollar store or different places like that. Not sure what else I have laying around that I could use, but you could use a bone folder too. Okay, so there is that. So now I'm just going to fold and mark and I printed this on a 65 pound cardstock um, the other ones that I've made were all out of just basically a paper okay so there is that now also you could have it this is the top this is the top that is the top because all three of these are the same size and they're just big enough for the flap so now i checked these because of the fact that we're dealing with the human factor here um i can already tell it's going to bind a little bit right there just because you know my cut wasn't perfectly straight so I'm just going to trim that down just a tiny little bit there because then it's not going to bind and buckle anywhere. And then this one here is going to be the same. It's hard to trace it perfectly and then cut it perfectly so I'm just taking a little bit off there and it will also depend on whether you're going to tuck these on the inside or the outside And then when I fold this down, I check my ends here. And you can see that one's buckling just a tiny little bit. 
So I'm just going to take that tiny little bit off. Just saves it from buckling. And I think I'll put them on the inside. I do actually like them on the inside. Okay, so now to decorate it. I have another piece of this. It was in actually uh, eight and a half by 11 inch sheet. So that's the same I used this corner up here with these butterflies. So this one, I'm going to use this. So it's going to be like so. Now for the sizing of what you need in here, what I did was I took this template and this was just to get an idea of size. And I just held it there through my line across. I could go down there, but it's a little bit narrower. And then when I cut it off, I want to make sure I take that line off because I want it to be that little bit smaller. So I'm just going to cut that across like so. And you can see my line. You can see the part of my line there from the last time. So now that's going to go in here. And I think that's going to look really, really nice. So uh, I am going to use my art glitter glue. Just your plain art glitter glue. And I'm going to go around my circle. I don't want a lot because I don't want it to run run out. And then I'm going to put glue on the right side of my vellum. You could use acetate for this. You could print on some vellum or acetate. Um, any kind of plasticky type stuff. You could even use like a screen of some kind. Okay, so I want to make sure that I put this the right way. And press it down. <clears throat> and that's how the butterflies are going to look on that side. Now you could, you can see right here where it's buckling just a little bit. So I'm just going to take the buckling off. There we go. So you can finish decorating at this point. You can, um, this would be when you would do any sewing. So if I was going to stitch around there, like I did on the other one, I did that, of course, before I glued it together. But I'm not going to stitch on this one, more so for the sake of doing the film. So now to decorate it further, actually, I'm going to glue it up. So it's going to be like that. So what I do is I run a little bit of glue on this side of my flap and then I go on the outside of my whatever backing of it and then when I close it up there is glue on both sides there. And it tends to just, I find it holds better. Press it down good. So there is that. So now 
I happen to have this fairy die cut and I think she would look very pretty there. So I'm just going to get a little pokey tool and make sure that all these little pieces are out. Okay. Just a couple left in there. Okay. But I thought the blue would go with the blue butterfly. And I don't want to put her all the way over there, so I think what I'm going to do is put her here. And then I'm just going to wrap that little piece around to the back side of the envelope. And I think that's what I will do. So let's glue her up. Things like these can be a little time consuming to glue up. You do want to put enough glue on them to hold them down, but you got to be quick enough so your glue doesn't dry. The little piece I'm putting to the back, I'll do after I've got her all glued down. Okay, that should be enough glue. So let's put her right about there. Just grab a tissue. Just to get any glue that has squished out. It's a good thing this dries clear. Okay, I need a little dab of glue right under there. Okay. And a little tiny bit. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to put a little glue on the back side there, and then I can fold it over. Just like that. I could have cut that piece off too, but... Okay. I think that's coming along pretty nice. And I have this piece left over. So I'm thinking on just putting that butterfly on the top. More so just to keep it, get it so that I've used it up. So I'm just going to cut around that. I have no idea where I got um, this paper from. There's a whole book full with some have flowers and dragonflies and whatnot like that. It's a fairly heavy vellum actually. Fussy cut this before to save time, but okay, so there's that. Now I'm really hoping that the glue is not going to come through on that. So, and I think just right up in that corner. Because I've got to put enough glue on this to hold it. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, 
I don't use much vellum because of that. Um, using it for a window or something is good because you can hide the glue on the back side. Okay, so let's put that right there. Okay. Need to put a little drop right on the end of his tail. Okay, and I can see you got a little bit of the back showing through there, so let's just trim that off. But we'll also, once I, I um, distress this, you won't see that as much. So there we go. There is a CD envelope. I just have to make a card now for inside of it. And it makes a nice dirty envelope on that 65 pound cardstock. And the glue does not show through on the vellum. So that is really good. But there we have that. So now you could make all kinds of CD cases with different shapes and different fronts and whatnot like that there. I hope you'll check this out and we will see you soon. Bye.